Hello, I'm Bernard Hickey from interest.co.nz and welcome to 90 at 9, brought to you in association with Bank of New Zealand. This is your morning briefing where you get everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock, starting now with the horrendous news of the earthquake and tsunami in Japan. Now upgraded to a 9 on the Richter scale, this quake is the biggest in Japanese history. It created a monster tsunami. And of course now everyone's looking at what the economic impact of this will be for not just the Japanese economy but the global economy and the New Zealand economy given the apparent scale of the disaster. However, it may not be as bad as it first looks. The region affected by this earthquake and tsunami produces about 8% of Japanese GDP and economists are saying that this disaster could be actually smaller in terms of its economic impact than the Kobe earthquake of 1995. That reduced Japanese GDP by 1.9%. Back then too, the Japanese economy was the second largest in the world. Now it's only the third largest, with about 8% of total world output. However, all of Toyota's plants have been shut down, and many of Sony's plants have been shut down in Japan. And of course we don't know yet what's going to happen with the nuclear power plants. Three apparently are now in trouble, and there is a risk of a meltdown. That would affect power supplies and widespread power outages across Japan would be a serious problem for its economy. However, the Bank of Japan is expected today to pump extra liquidity, cash, into the system to make sure the financial system stays stable there. However, what does it mean for New Zealand? Japan is the fourth largest buyer of our exports. And although it used to be a significant buyer, it's down the pecking order now behind Australia, China, America. Also, what's it going to do to insurance costs? Well, actually, and this is quite strange when you consider the scale of the disaster in Japan, it may actually be less of a hit for the global reinsurance industry than the Christchurch earthquake. That's because most insurance in Japan is insured with Japanese companies. Also, quite a few people are underinsured in Japan. So most people are expecting this disaster to be less of an impact than the Christchurch earthquake. Now what else does it mean for the New Zealand dollar, for example? Well, the New Zealand dollar is expected to weaken versus the yen. That's because often the yen strengthens after a disaster like that. Many Japanese companies repatriate assets. And after the Kobe earthquake, the yen actually rose 21%. Having said that, New Zealand dollar has actually strengthened a bit over the weekend. It's up to 74 US cents. The other aspect to watch here is that Japanese government debt is relatively high at 200% of GDP. To be fair, most of it is held by Japanese investors. But the Japanese government will have to borrow an awful lot to rebuild the economy of, of the northeast of Japan. Now that's going to have an effect on global markets if the Japanese have to borrow it on global markets. There's the risk there of rising interest rates and it will be harder for New Zealand and others to borrow when the Japanese are borrowing so much. I'm Bernard Hickey. It was a slightly extended 90 seconds at 9 o'clock brought to you in association with Bank of New Zealand.